Welcome back. Tonight, we're focusing on a case out of Baytown, Texas. Thursday marks the two-year anniversary of the police killing of Pamela Turner. Police officer Juan De La Cruz shot and killed Pamela Turner in May 2019 in the parking lot of her apartment complex. The Baytown Police Department says De La Cruz was patrolling the complex when he saw Turner, who he knew had outstanding warrants. As he tried to arrest her, there was a scuffle and De La Cruz pulled out his taser. The officer then claimed that Turner took his taser and attempted to use it on him, and that's when he fired five rounds. Shaky cell phone video captured the encounter. Now, the family says Turner suffered from mental illness. This evening, outrage continues to grow in Baytown, Texas, where the community is demanding the firing of police officer Juan De La Cruz. Yes, he still has a job. Joining me tonight to get us up to speed on this case is legal analyst and social justice advocate Monique Presley, who is also the founder of In Defense of Black Women and Girls, one of the host organizations for tomorrow's rally. Monique, how are you doing tonight? Um, I'm I'm well, Yodi. I'm I'm better that this case is getting the coverage that it desperately needs. So thank you for spending the time. No, of course. Thank you for being here. All right. So police killed Pamela Turner in 2019. Some people are only just now learning about the case. Why Why do so many cases where Black women are victims of police violence get overlooked and underreported? You know, I can't explain um, why certain of these cases get covered and certain ones don't. It seems like there is really just a lack of awareness and knowledge that we too are victims of um, police violence and police misconduct. And so what we're trying to do tomorrow is change that by making the public outcry that's necessary for uh, people to know what's going on. That yes, we care about what's happening to black men in the streets, but it's also happening to us. And many more times, Yodi, it's happening in cases such as this, where there is mental illness present where someone needs help mm -hmm. and instead they're killed. So this officer still on the job two years later, he's actually been indicted on criminal charges, not murder, mind you, but assault. And he's not even on administrative leave. How is that even possible? Well, I do believe that he's on admin leave with pay, but that is still disgusting, right? Because the taxpayers for the past two years have been paying for this person to basically have an extended vacation. Um, and the only reason actually that charges were brought at all was because of the work of, of plaintiff's counsel, of attorney Crump and of his co-counsel in finding evidence that would prove and make the case to the prosecutor that once that taser had been fired, it could not fire again, the particular kind that it was. So the officer knew that he was not in danger of his life when he backed up and unloaded uh, his service weapon on Pamela Turner. So what would justice look like in this case for the Turner family? Well, I mean, Yodi, you know, we talk about this all the time, and justice really is when this doesn't happen. Justice is when Pamela Turner um, is sent a, a medical assistance unit that handles mental health cases. Justice is when police officers are not hunting for people under the guise of warrants when they're really trying to get them, you know, evicted, kicked out of buildings. So the most that we can hope for is accountability in the absence of real justice where things like this do not happen, where we could reverse time, we want this officer to be held accountable uh, in criminal court. We want him fired. And then we also want to see the civil case be successful. Those are the things that we hope are happening for this case and that we'd like to see in any case where a police officer breaks the law. Accountability. All right. There's a rally happening tomorrow. Several prominent activists and lawyers are expected to attend to hopefully bring some much needed attention to this case. Houston rapper Trey The Truth is also debuting a new music video titled Protect Our Women. Is that the message you hope people take away from tomorrow? 
It's one of the messages that I hope that that they take away, uh, that first of all, the police are supposed to protect and serve. So the obligation to protect us is on those who are given license um, to, to have a gun and to have weapons that they're not supposed to be using against us, but using it in protection of us. So yes, and then if we can't count on them, we have to protect ourselves. And I'm very thankful uh, for Trey the Truth and for all of those who are participating in the Houston area themselves that are local, who are going to ensure that this gets the attention that it needs. So while we are black women who are organizing this for tomorrow, we have the support of our brothers and it's greatly appreciated. All right, legal analyst and social justice advocate extraordinaire, the Monique Presley. Thank uh, you so thank much, you. sis, for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me.